right what is up everybody and welcome back to another modding video on the channel today we are going to be touching cyberpunk 2077 and if i'm being honest i was debating on whether or not i was going to do another modding tutorial because the last one we did was on the witcher 3 and till this day i am still getting comments on you know how to do this how to do that i was pretty certain that i was very you know thorough i did every step in detail but people still don't know how to figure it out you know i'm not saying anything to you you know no no judgment but you know it kind of made me want to stray away from tutorials because some people still don't get it no matter how much i dumb it down but luckily enough cyberpunk is very simple um i know i kind of said the same thing about red dead 2 but at least with this one you don't have to worry about load order you don't have to worry about modding any type of text nothing of that so if you're coming from those videos and you're worried about it being complicated it's pretty simple and it's pretty straightforward so here we are we're going to you know dive deep on how to get these mods installed now i have this installed on steam however i know this is also available on gog it should be a somewhat similar process um as long as you know how to locate your files because that's really the only thing we're going to be using steam for is just how to locate where the game is installed which is going to be the first step that you need to do in order to find out where your mods are going to go so if you don't know how to do that you can simply go over here right click the game go to manage and then you're going to do browse local files and what this will do it will bring up a folder and it will show you where exactly cyberpunk is installed on your computer now before we move any further let's go ahead and get rid of me because we're not here to focus on me we're here to focus on the game so this is how your folder is going to look at the start um actually no i'm, I'm lying you're not going to see this red 4 ext folder and you might not see this mod folder now the reason you won't see this one is because we're going to add this with a mod later on and a lot of mods are going to use this file to essentially have the mods work into the game you might have this mods folder here if you have installed a red mod through either you know steam or gog which is like the actual modding tool that CD Projekt Red has released themselves. Uh, if you go into it, I only have one mod here because most of my mods are actually, you know, manually installed through either the archive bin or R6 folder. But we'll kind of get into that later. But if you want to know where you're going to be, you know, dragging and dropping most of your mods, it will most likely be here and nowhere else. So don't worry about scrounging your entire Windows folder for it. Now, in order to get the mods, we're going to go to a lovely website called nexusmods.com. If you never heard of this website, it is pretty much your all in one shop. In terms of all of the major AAA games, every now and then you might have a smaller title that might go to gamebanana.com. But if you're ever looking for mods for a game, nine times out of ten you want to check nexusmods.com. I've come here for The Witcher, Red Dead, Fallout, all types of stuff. So. Yeah, if you need to figure out where to go, most likely here is your bet. Now, before we get into anything, before we get into all the mods that add cool stuff like being able to slow down time permanently, being able to drive better and do all that type of stuff, we're going to need our core mods. What core mods are, they are essentially the first step in order to get all of the other mods working because without these mods, you know the game is going to look at all the other files and be like what the hell is this we don't know how to read this we or it, it might not even read it at all it might just boot the game up normally and the mods won't behave because you don't have any type of you know script reader or archive reader or anything that can actually detect the mods and you know input them into the game so in order to have that done we're going to need to download a kind of big handful of core mods some games have like a smaller selection of core mods i think like the witcher only had like one or two even red dead only had like you know lenny's mod loader and asi loader nothing too crazy but cyberpunk has quite a bit we have red 4 ext we have red script we have tweak xl archive xl native settings ui input loader and then lastly we have codeware now you might run into a couple of mods that will say you need cyber cmd i've seen a couple out there that say that this is recommended but from my experience every time i try to use these um 
I got a error when I tried to launch the game. And the reason for that is because it kind of conflicts with another mod that is a core mod that I forgot to tab, which is uh, Cyber Engine Tweaks, because this is the main mod we are going to be using that not only helps, you know, a lot of the other mods work, it's going to bring up an actual like window within the game to where you can kind of customize things while you're actually inside the game. So this is going to be one of your main mods that like 80% of the ones you download uh, for Cyberpunk are going to, you know, use this or require this in some way. So this should be the first mod you should get off the rip. And then once you get this down, you should go through and start downloading all these. I mean, if you don't want to download them off the start, you can hold off on it. But nine times out of 10, if you go and try to download some other mod, you will kind of get a warning. Or if you just go to requirements, I'll tell you like, hey, in order to download this mod, you will need this. So you can go ahead and get all of those out the way. I can find my folder, which I already have them all in to kind of make this easier so you guys can see. Once you get all of your downloads, this is what they'll look like. Now, they will normally come in a zip folder. You can right click and just click, you know, extract and it will extract to a folder. But you will have archive, codeware, input loader, mod settings, all this, yada, yada, yada. And when you click on it, very easy enough, um, it will show you exactly where they go. So if we go back to our cyberpunk folder, let's bring these side by side so you can kind of see them. Um, as you can see, when we open up the archive Excel folder, it already gives us a R6 folder and a red 4 EXT folder. Now, if we did not already have this red 4 EXT folder, this is where we would essentially create one. So all you would do is just highlight these, drag them over to where the game is installed, let it go. Now for me, it prompts me if I over if I want to override it because I already have these installed. For you, you won't get this window, so you would just, you know, drag it over and that's it. Now I can hit X because I don't want to replace it since it's already there. But you're essentially going to do these for all the mods. So you're just going to go over here, drag it, bring it over, drop it, you know, and just go through each one one by one and what you want to do after you test all of these core mods before you download any other mods that affect gameplay just simply boot up the game and see if it launches if it launches you'll know that none of these broke the game they shouldn't break the game because they are essentially there to make sure things don't break but sometimes you might have a situation to where the game updated but these mods haven't been updated so if you try downloading these mods and it crashes then that lets you know hey Maybe I have to wait until the mod author, you know, drops an update and then I can kind of, you know, download it and see how it goes from there. But that is essentially how you're going to install all the core mods. You just, you know, open them all up, see what are the what are the guts inside and then drag them over here and then drop them there. And then there you have it. Now, if we're going to go go ahead and get to actual gameplay changing mods i just had a folder open and i already lost it don't know where it went on um, my video here we go so we're going to touch a few uh, mods that i get asked a lot of questions and people always ask well what mod is that how'd you get that so first we have arasaka cyber arms which is going to add you know a cool cosmetic to some of our arms we have quick, uh, custom quick slots, which is going to give us a lot more options in terms of hotkeys so we don't have to, you know, hit all and swap between a whole bunch of things. We have Cyber EX, which is going to give us the option to equip things like quick hacks and sand devastands and berserk at the same time, have multiple leg inputs and multiple arm inputs, so forth. Load be gone is going to be great if you're constantly modding the game and you're like having to exit out the game, reboot it, exit out, reboot it. Because this is going to get rid of the whole intro cutscene and a lot of other loading mechanics that will save you a whole lot of time. And then to go with Cyberware EX, we also have Ripper Deck, which is going to give us the ability to remove Cyberware in the main menu. So without further ado, we're going to extract Cyberware Arms or Arasaka Cyber Arms just to see how this process is going to go. Because this, in my opinion, is kind of one of the more complex installs but i will walk you guys through it because when you open this you notice you don't get your simple r6 or you know archive folder it says a whole lot of other bs now if you want you can click the read me and see you know how to properly install these by reading all the instructions but i'm going to save you the hassle and just kind of brush that to the side and show you how to do it myself the first step 
If you want to get a skin, well, first off, they have images. If you want to see how some of these skins look, you can go to skins, click here. You know, it'll bring this up. You can sit there and, you know, scroll through each one and see which one you like. Me, personally, I like body bag. Body bag is my favorite one. So we're going to be using this one and go from there. So going out of that, we're first going to need our required files. Now, you notice... The first thing it says is rsakaarms.archive. Now, it doesn't give us the folder, but the fact that it says .archive lets us know that that's where that goes. So we're gonna go to our archive folder, double click that, double click PC, and obviously click mod since we're gonna be downloading a mod. And as you can see, I already have a whole bunch here, but for you, this will probably be empty. So what you're gonna do, I'm gonna drag this over here, for me, it asked to override it since I already have it there. But for you, you would just drop it and then you can go back to uh, the skin library because now we're going to do a skin. So if you're female, of course, pick female. If you're male, do male. We're on a male, so we're going to pick that and we're going to apply which one we want. So for now, let's do default. And we said we we're going to do body bag, right? So go to body bag. We're going to take these two, drag them over, drop them and then let them go. So that's uh, that's the skin already done. If you wanna add more, like for example, if you have, you know, Gorilla Arms or Launcher, you could do that as well. So for me, I have the Launcher. So we'll do Body Bag and then we'll drag that as well. And then that covers the skin. So what we're also gonna need to do, I personally do remove nails cause I did have a couple of problems with the nails clipping. So we would also do that as well. Drag that over. And then lastly, we would do the actual Arasaka Cyber Arms themselves. So we're gonna go here, once again, click mail, go to default, and it gives you a choice. If you just wanna do like the regular arms, you could do thin arms. If you have the mod Gem Fiend, which makes V like, you know, more buff, you can do that. Or if you wanna do like a weird kind of uh, variant, you can do that as well. We're just gonna do um, the default, go here, drag that over, bam, as you can see. And that is pretty much how you would install that mod. And then hopefully once you boot it up, everything would load correctly if you did do it in that order. So moving on from there, let's try out something like custom quick slots. We can extract that. Now, as you can see, when we open this one, we just simply get the R6 in the bin folder. So if we go back to our cyberpunk main folder, we can just click these, drag these over, drop them. It gives me the override prompts since I already have them. I'm gonna just skip, but that's how you do that. And like I said, once you do one mod, go ahead and try to launch the game, see if it works. I know for a fact that it works since I already have it installed, so I'm not gonna bother with it. But if you are installing mods, please make sure to only do them one at a time, open the game, see if you get a prompt saying that it worked, and then go from there. But now that we have that, we can delete that. Let's do Cyborg EX, let's extract that, get rid of that. Drag that over. You just do these, you know, one by one and just keep doing it until you have them all installed. You know, don't be like me and try to download 25 mods at once and then drag them all over. Well, that one actually didn't overwrite. I wonder why. That's weird. I think that might be an older version. Let me see. Load to be gone. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Come on. Oh, yeah, this one has a space and that one doesn't. That's weird. So which one is this one? This doesn't have a space. So I'm assuming this one is an older version. So delete that one. Yeah, it's a little funky. But all right. So let's go back. And lastly, we'll do Ripper Deck. Extract that, open that, R6, drag that over, drop it, bada bing, there we go. So once you have a couple of mods installed, here comes the next step, which is simply going over to Steam and launching the game. Now, I launched my game through the EXE folder. I just click, you know, the little icon on my uh, stream deck. I don't even bother opening it, uh, opening the game through Steam. But if you want to have mods that launch through Red Mod, you might want to do it this way. That way you can get this little prompt and click enable mods. They'll give you this little warning at the bottom saying that, you know, up, you know, mods might cause the game to crash since the update however um if the mod has been updated that's no longer the case they just kind of give you that warning to you know help you out but we're gonna hit play 
go ahead and click yes let the game boot up now when you're installing cyber engine tweaks for the first time you're gonna get a prompt when the game opens and it's gonna say to assign a hotkey to open the console command now for me I set it to insert so whenever I hit insert on my keyboard you're gonna get a overlay that will pop up once we get into the menu now you notice My game kind of didn't load at all. Okay, so now that we're in the main menu, I can hit insert, which is the key I bonded for my cyber engine tweaks. And you're not going to see all this crap. Most likely, all you are going to see is just this thing up here. And if you want to test out if things are working, you can hit console and uh, see if it loaded any mods if you have any mods installed now for me it says all of these mods have been loaded so that's good news i don't have any red text always be on the lookout for red text because that will let you know if something went wrong or if something didn't load or you know if there's any issues um if you want to change any mods that have custom key bindings that's where you go to bindings so for example we can look at custom quick slots because the way this mod is going to work we have to assign key bindings in order to equip certain things. So I have, you know, the tilde key is number one, five, six, and seven. Now, another way to configure this mod is by using native settings UI. So if, if we were to actually go to mods, which is something new over here, we can also go to quick slots and customize it even further. So we can change, you know, how many slots we have. I have four. We change the, the key, so we would do tilde for that one, five, six, and seven. You can change if you want it to be a frag grenade, you know, projectile launch system, optical camo, whatever it is you want. We also have other mods here that we didn't go over, like, you know, sit anywhere, um, the metro system and whatnot. So just to kind of go over a quick idea how some of these mods will be incorporated into the actual interface themselves. This is kind of how it looks. You'll either have native settings UI that you can go and click on the menu, or if you don't have that, you can hit insert or whatever it is you bind it to your keyboard. Go here and tweak it from there. So this is kind of how to set everything up. Now, as far as actually using the mods, you know, well, let's load into the game and kind of see how that goes. Let's find a random save like this one here. So as you can see by looking at the arms, the Arasaka Cyber Arms mod did indeed work. Sometimes you might have some weird behavior like, you know, one arm will look good, but then one arm looks weird. Or you might have a situation where you try launching it and you find out that you didn't install the launcher correctly. So this is how everything should look once you have it installed correctly. If I bring up my HUD, you can see that in the bottom left, the quick slots did work. If I hit tilde, we cloak if I hit five six or seven we switch grenades so everything is up and running if we go to cyberware we are able to unequip and re-equip anything thanks to ripper deck and also thanks to cyberware ex we are allowed to have you know sandevisan quick hacks berserk more hands a whole bunch of overpowered stuff so that lets you know that everything is up and running. As I said, you know, it's a pretty straightforward process. Everything should be simple. You shouldn't run into any headaches. The only thing that you might run into is crashing. So if your game is like, you know, quitting to desktop and it's saying Cyberpunk is flatlined, that's usually a case of just a mod not being updated. You just gotta wait for it to be updated. Or it could be a case of a mod not being compatible with something else. So if you have one mod that kind of changes the HUD, and then you download another mod that changes the HUD and in the in the uh, description they don't state whether the mods are compatible that could be an issue what's causing the game to crash but nine times out of ten you shouldn't really run into too many problems compared to dealing with something like the Witcher or even Red Dead or Fallout games that require a very you know specific load order so there it is folks you know very short sweet video not you know too long or in-depth like the witcher 
Um, I'm not going to really edit this too much because I don't really think it needs that much editing. I mean, I might have messed up a few points here and there or just cut out a few dead moments. But there you have it, folks. If you want to learn how to mod Cyberpunk, it's very simple. If the game gets updated or things change over time and the whole modding process isn't the same, I will try my best to update this video and kind of give you guys more you know, details on what to do. But in until then, folks, y'all know what to do. Hit the like, hit the subscribe. Until the next time, we are outro. You feel me?